Jehovah by Shem Yahushai. Your power is the power of powers. Mm. And the Lord of Lords. And a great power. A mighty and terrible. A mighty and a terrible which regardeth not the persons nor taketh rewards. Yeah, man. So the Lord don't care, man. You know? The Lord don't care, man. See, people think that they have, like, some sort of secret agreement with the Heavenly Father that he can, he won't touch them, man. Or something. The Lord don't give a damn, man. Alright? He's the power and that's it, man. Mm. You know? He touches who he wants to touch. He preserves who he wants to preserve, man. Okay? Precept. Psalms 47. You know where I'm going with this one. For the Lord too. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is the great King over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under his feet. Yeah. He said the great power, man. The nations um, started calling him al Shajjah, which means demon-like terrible power, man. Okay, because what they would do is, right, they would see, um, they would see the miracles and the things that the Lord would do around Israel or for Israel, especially in war, and they would come like, nah, 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 man. Our God ain't it. Whoever we're worshipping ain't the one, man. The God of the Israelites, al Shadra, the demon-like power, man. Okay? You know? It says in the scriptures, through his nostrils, he opened the sea, man. You know? He sent the chariot to, to bring fire and hold back the, the, the Egyptians and prepared the way. Okay? Miriam made a song about it, man. And the whole of Israel danced and praised the Lord, praised the Lord for that, man. Okay? This is the power of Israel, man. Right. Yahweh, Bashem Yahshai, man. Okay? The Lord ain't nothing to play with, man. You know? <coughs> Isaiah 45. Yeah. And 5. I'm the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. And there is none else. Yeah, man. There's, there's none else, man. Okay? There is none else, man. Like, like in some in, like in some belief systems, they've got the God of this and the God of that. You know, the God of the sun and then the God of water, the God of the rain, you know, or the, uh, uh, what's it, the God of um, fertility, I think, the God of sex, the God of war. Listen, man, the scripture is saying, Yahweh is the God of everything. Man. Right. Okay, I am who I am, man. All right. That's the name. You know, Yahweh, he exists. Whatever you think of, it goes back to him. You don't need to start com compartmentalizing and and segregate in certain aspects of things. Oh yeah, we need water, so we're going to pray to the God of the sea. No, man. Yahweh, He is. All right, whatever you need, He's got that, man. You know. That's why they started. When, that's why it's our it's our ancient customs. When the Father would do something, you would say His name and then what He's done. So when um, Yahweh gave healing, they called him Yahweh Rafa. He is the existing one, the one who heals, man. So his name transcends everything, man. You know? Keep going in verse 5. From, from verse 5 onwards. I gird if people say, there is none else. There is, there is no power beside me. I gird if people No, that has not known me. Verse 6. That they may know from the rising of the sun. See, see, see how poetic the Heavenly Father is, man. Nobody can write like this, man. That they may know from the rising of the sun, God, and from the west, that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, and there is none else. Yeah, man. So that is Him alone, man. Him alone, man. You know, and right now the people they have an idea of God that oh yeah he's the only one but still it's not the right it's not in 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 its full entirety man when your Shai comes back man people gonna understand that this is the great power of the universe man you know mm. this is him man and this is all his show okay and they're gonna get a rude awakening man you know because the way people perceive God right now is that he just nice easy going fella you right, know you're right chap right. You know, see you around. I speak to you when I want to speak to you. When I don't want to know about you, I leave you on the corner. No, man, people are going to understand that the how about Shim Yao Shai, all right? Allah Shadja is that great power, man. Right. You know? Okay? People got, it, people got it all wrong, man. You know? Go on. Uh, Job 18. 
11. It says, Terror shall make him afraid on every side and shall drive him unto his feet. Last one. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. Yeah, man. So all the people that think they're something and they, they got their backing in whatever they got, their status, the family they come from, their wealth, that's all going to be rooted up, man. It keeps going back to what we were talking about. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess, man. That's what's happening, man. That's what's going to happen. Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, Jehovah Shem, Yahweh Shai, do all these things. There you go, man. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions, man. You've got God, which is all for righteousness and good and the, the furthering of everybody under the sun. And then you've got his, his you've got his um, you've got his enemy, Satan. Let's just let's just use logic for a second. Evaluate the term most high. Yeah? How can you be the most high if there's somebody on your level to go against you? Like when you have, when you have a football match and it's the final, alright? You don't start celebrating the winner of the team before the match because it has to be battled out the first half, the second half. It may go to extra time, it may go to penalties, but at the, at the end of the game, you're going to have one team who comes up on top, who is the most high, who, who wins the trophy. So how can the most high have the title most high if there's somebody that he's fighting? He's not worthy of that title then. He's got, he's got somebody that's going against him. So for the fact that the most high is the most high, which he is, it means both good and bad, as it said, creating good and evil is under his subjection. That's why he said it here, read it again. I create. Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. Yeah. I make peace and create evil. Yeah. I, the Lord, Jehovah, Isham, Yahushai, do all these things. He does all of these things, man. So when you see wars and evils and pestilences, Oh yeah, a teacher was stabbed to death today by a student. Or there was a volcano and people got died. The people um, got killed and they died. Or there was a famine. Or a father, and, a father and daughter tried to cross the border but they drowned in the sea. But guess what? Who did that? That's right. The Heavenly Father, man. You know? But then the Heavenly Father has agents, has workers under himself who will do these things. Okay? So the Heavenly Father has set it up that on the righteous side, we've got the angels, or well, Salah, we've got Yahweh Shine, we've got the angels, and we've got his men who, <coughs> who will perform righteousness and good things from the Heavenly Father. On the left hand side, we've got the spiritual demon Shatan, we've got the demons in the spirit realm, and then you've got the physical um, yeah, you've got the you've got the physical um, what's the word? Yeah, yeah, the physical manifestation, the water of, of Satan on the earth, which is a, which is a particular nation known as Esau Eden. So the good that the right side do is from the heavenly Father. The bad that the left side do is from the heavenly Father. Wow. But they all just do these things in their jobs, man, and it all goes back to him. So how can you escape him, man? You can't. You can't escape the Most High. Right. This is Psalms 103. And 20. Bless the Lord, Jehovah Shem Yahushai, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his words. Verse 21. Bless ye the Lord, Jehovah Shem Yahushai, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Yeah, man, and that's um, the word there, Malachim, which means could be king or angels, servants. So it's like the word um, Abadja or Badaya means servant of the power, or servant of Yahweh, man. We're all servants under the Lord, man, doing his bidding, man. Okay, the scriptures talk about the angels who do the bidding of the Heavenly Father, man. You know? When we see chariots over the camp, who do you think sent that? It's the Heavenly Father. To prove our faith, but also to protect us, man. You know? There's angels here right now. That's right. You know? Who do you think sent them? The Heavenly Father, man, who excel in strength, man, you know. This word right now, although we're in the flesh, we excel in strength, man, to a certain degree, because this word is, is powerful, man, right. you know. That's why sometimes you feel like 
you want to break out of your body, you know, like your spirit just wants to start doing, Bursting at the you know. scenes. I get it all the time, man. Why? Because it's that strength of the word, of the spirit, that is being contained in these chains of darkness, man. You know? So it's all the doing of the Lord, man. Verse 22, bless the Lord, Yahweh, show me our share. All his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, Yahweh, show me our share of my soul. Yeah, man. So, really and truly, when you get down to the nooks and cranny of it, what can you do except say, Barakat Yahweh, show me our share? What can you do, man? You can't escape the Lord, man. Yeah. You can't. Can't. All you can do is praise him, man. That's why it says in the book of God, when you praise the Lord, you can't you can't praise him enough, man. Okay? Because hey, there's angels actually that are that's their job just to, 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 to be there. Yeah. They rock their heart, rock their heart. Right, man. From time all the way, man. From the beginning of time. That's yeah. their job just to praise the Lord, man. You know? Right. Right. And he and he and he as Brother would mention Shlakia. Brother mentioned last week that he's um Yahweh Yahweh is narcissistic. Yeah, he is. So he loves it when we praise him. Yeah. Now, I was looking up at the sky the other day. I didn't see no chariots, but just the sky alone made me. The spirit came in me to just praise, praise um praise the, the, the fact that the Most High, you know, made the sky. Yeah, and I, I was just all, in awe of it. I didn't see no chariots, sure. but I was just in awe of it, and I had to praise the Most High, man. Like yesterday, I was on the coach coming down from the Midlands, right? And it was late, it was like 12 in the morning there. Yeah? And it's dark and you see the clouds. And then when you look through the clouds, it's like you're seeing this glow. Wow. There's actually lights in the heavens, man. You know? There's actually lights, man. Hey, that's in Genesis, man. The greater light to um, rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, which is the sun and the moon. But then if you go before that, it says, let there be light. The word in the Hebrew is a war. So the earth actually has its own glow about it, man. That's why when you look up in the sky sometimes, you see a glow. Right. That's the natural light of the earth, man. What can you do but praise the Lord, man? You know? So you can't escape it, man. John. John chapter 9, verse 1. And as Yahweh Shai passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Mm. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Yahweh answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of the Most High should be made manifest. There, there you go. So what happens is, is that when you sin, it says in the scriptures that the Lord will visit you in the third and fourth generation. So you could do a sin now and pay for it in another lifetime when you come back. Okay, that's, the, that's how it usually happens. Right? So the people understood that and they were saying, well, was it a, a sin from before, basically? And he said, he didn't, his person didn't sin, neither did he sin, but he was made like this so that the glory of the Father could be manifest, man. John 9 and 3 Yahweh Shai answered Neither has this man sinned nor his parents for the works of the Most High should be made manifest in him I must work the works of him that sent me whilst it is day the night cometh when no man can work as strong as I am in the world I am the light of the world yeah man when he had when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spill. See, that's that, that's that spiritual power, man. The Lord knew that if he combines his spit with the elements of the ground and he makes it a paste and he rubs it on the guy's eye and then, and then told him to go wash it off, he going to see, man. Now, the Lord could have simply said, hey, 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 open, eyes open and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the spirit, how, that's how I had to go down. Right, right, right. Showing that the Lord He's intact with the elements, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, because the earth, man, has nutrients in it, man. Oh. <laughs> and you combine that with certain elements and stuff. And he rubbed it on his eyes, and people, people must have been looking at him like, "What the hell is this guy doing, man?" You know. But then when he washed it off, the guy could see, man. And guess what? The point is this: the man didn't sin, neither did his parents sin. But he was made blind so that Yahusha could do this. That's an allegory as well because the man was blind and 
you have what I just said, it was the light of the world. So um, what happens when you're blind is that your ret retina can't take up the light. So that was all parabolic basically. So, 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 so. Even another example of um, um, Lazarus, right? It was a family friend of the Lord's, okay? And Lazarus was very sick. So this, I believe it was his sister um, sent word to Yahawashai and said, listen man, come quickly and heal him before he dies. Now, when you check it out, Yahawashai could have made it to where they were in time before he died. But Yahawashai prolonged it. He allowed Lazarus to die. So then um, Martha said, oh, when Yahawashai came four days late basically, and that's spiritual, we're talking about numerology because the word four, word, the number four, represents mercy. Yahawashai came four days late and what did Martha say to him? Oh Lord, you came too late, you could have come, he's now dead. But what did he do? He said, in fact, let's get it man, because that's powerful. Stop talking about it. Uh, geez, I have to type in Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That, oh, that is in uh, John 11, start from verse 38, okay, because Yahweh Shai, when you check it out, he could have made it in time to heal Lazarus, but then that would have been like, oh yeah, you've done it before, you've seen you heal people that are sick, you know, so all of these things had to happen so that people could know that this is the son of, of the Most High, man. Yeah, 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 because uh, Lazarus, he even said to decompose. Yeah. It's not like here where they put you in the fridge. Yeah. Or you can stay there for two, three weeks, nothing happens to your body. Then yeah, man, they just wrap you up and everything, your body. Because as soon as you die, your body starts to take a post away. Yeah. So after four days, you know, the smell starts to come already. Huh. You know? That's right. Yeah. Let's see what it says my friend. Right. So, uh, John 11 and 38. Yahweh was shy, therefore, again, groaning in himself, come up to the grave. Let's go up a few verses so that. See, because Yahushua had compassion on people, man. It says that Yahushua wept at times. He, you know, he, he looked at people and had compassion on them, you know. Because, yeah, he was an austere man, but he was, a, like we were talking earlier, he came as a man. When you make bonds with people and that, and you see certain things, it moves you, man. It says he was moved in the spirit and he wept, man. You know, but nonetheless, he had a job to do. So, back, uh, it's uh, John 11 and 32. Then when Mary was come where Yahweh Shai was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been there, my brother had not died. See, so she thought that he had, she thought that Yahweh Shai's power went as far as healing people. He can only do it if they're still alive. Okay? Yeah? So she felt when Yahweh Shai came on the scene now, Lazarus was dead and buried, man. And she said, Oh Lord, had you been here? You know, had you been here, you could have done X, Y, Z. Go on. Yeah, let this pass me. Verse 33. When Yahweh Shai therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Yeah, man, because he basically, although he knew that he had to do this so that the power could be revealed that he is the son of the Most High. It's still a painful thing, man. Imagine close rel not relatives, but he knew of their family. That all of them are crying, and you know, Martha, Mary's crying. Lazarus, they see the he sees the tomb of, of dead Lazarus. He's, he's moved, man. You know, like when you, like even like I can't lie, man. A couple years back, when my uncle died, all right, I was there in the house, and my family's bawling. <laughs> he was my favorite uncle too. Uh -huh. You know, I kind of shed a tear. Spirit come on you. <laughs> but then I was like, shit, man, he's in a better place, man. Oh. And when it, the, the day before he died, man, I went in the hospital and he held my hand like that, man. Give me a hand, bro. And he said, I know I'm going to see you. And I said, you're going to be good, man. And the next day I got the news he died. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's bawling, man. And I, I was crying as well, man. But then I got to the point and I wiped my tears. Hey man, I don't mourn for long. Give me two, three days and I'm good, man. Because why? I know where the person is, man. He's in a better situation than me. Okay? But nonetheless, your emotion's gonna creep up in there a little bit. So your house I was moved in the spirit and he started crying, man. Go on. 
verse 34 and said where have you laid it they said unto him lord come and see Yahushai wept then said the jews behold then said the jews behold how he loved it verse 37 yeah because Yahushai had love for Lazarus man and some of them said can not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died yeah, so they were getting all simple, man. Oh, yeah, he healed blind people. Why couldn't he just say, oh, don't die, man? You know, because they thought that he wasn't going to do anything. They just thought, you know, like they say, oh, pay your respects. They thought Yahusha is going to the tomb to pay his respects, man. Oh, yeah, but if you were here, you could have done something about it. Come on, man. Verse 38. Yahusha, therefore, again, groaning in himself, came up to the cave. Come up to the cave. So like, yeah. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Cause that's how it used to be back then. You weren't, you would, you would dig into the ground, but then they would make like a tomb over it, man. You know, go on. Yahushai, Yahushai said, "Take thee away thy the stone." Yahushai, Yahushai said, "Take thee away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead." Saith unto him, Lord. By this time, he stink up. Yeah, so they were, Yahweh was saying, after you, see, you cry a bit, you, you, you feel moved in the spirit, but then you man up, man, all right, time, to, time for business, man, take the stone away. And they're, they're, they're saying, oh yeah, but it's been four days, you know, he's going to start, he's decaying already, he's going to be stinking, man. Like, what, what are you doing? Like, he's dead. Yeah. Take the stone away. Yahushai, Yahushai said, Take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead. Saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Mm. Yahushai saith unto him. And back then in the climate, man, Israel was hot, man. So four days in that heat, man, that's not a, that would make you vomit, man. You know? Go on. <coughs> saith unto him, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of the Most High. Mm. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Yahushai lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I think thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of thy but because of the people which which stand by and said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. You see, so the reason why Yahushai, the reason why Lazarus had to die so that he could be used as a tool so that the Lord, the people around them would know that this, this man, Yahweh Shai, has been sent from the Heavenly Father that he is the Son, okay? Go on. And, and I knew, and I knew that here is me always but because of the people who stand by and said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me and when he thus had spoken he cried with a loud voice. See, how shall I work on that timid shit, man? Okay, you cry, you moan, and then you get down to business, man. He cried with a loud voice and said, Lazarus, come forth. Right, and he had to say Lazarus, man. Because if he just had come forth in that sense, all the dead bodies in that region wow. would have just come out of the grave, man. He had to be specific, man. Lazarus, come forth. Go on. And he that was dead came forth. So Lazarus in the death cloth, all wrapped up and stuff. And that's scary, man. You start seeing some guy coming forward out of the tomb, man. <laughs> Mummy. Mummy, man. That would have, that would have, hey, man. Sorry. Sorry. Like I said earlier, all they could do is be in shock and praise the Most High and know that this is the son of the Most High. You know, Lazarus come forth, he cried it aloud, man. And then you see him coming out. You know, you see, like, you take away the stone, it's a bit dark. And you just see this figure coming forward, man. <laughs> that would bug you up, man. And he that was and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave cloth. So he was in a grave cloth, man, you know, but the Lord put the spirit back in him and he came forth, man. Yeah, that's what um, Esau gets a lot of the um, the movies about, you know, the undead, the walking dead. He gets, he gets it from the Bible and he also gets it from the, the, the Egyptologists as well. You know, the walking dead, the mummy. Because they did die in ancient Egypt, they they, um, they mummified the dead. That like when the dead died, they took out the organs, they took out the brain, and then they mummified. Um, they, they wrapped up the um, the dead body, 
when they did, there were certain rituals that they conducted and shit, man. Because they believed the life after death was what? Um, these elites, they, they know about like, you know what I'm saying, resurrection, that they get from the scriptures. Alright? Yeah. But yeah, like, like that right there, that's a perfect yeah. example. Yeah, man. So La La Lazarus, um, Lazarus came forth out of the grave, man. That's that's some scary stuff, man. You know. Yeah. And you know, it's our custom as well that when you bury somebody, you you bury them with um, sweet spices and balm and aloes yeah, yeah. and stuff. Like when your house shy died, they said that they put a hundred pound weight worth of um, spices on him, man. Right. You know. But he didn't really need it because he was coming back. Same yeah. with Lazarus, man. You know. So Lazarus came forth from the grave. Yeah. And all of that had to happen so that the people around would know that this is the son of the Most High and this is the type of power we're dealing with. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grey cloth, mm. and his face was bound about with a loose napkin. Mm. So he had the thing on for his face as well. Anybody want water or juice? Good, I'm good. Yeah, what shall I say? Onto them. Loose him. Let him go. You see, that's, that's crazy, man. Here you have a guy, he's been dead for four days. Here comes the Lord on the scene. Lazarus comes forth. He comes out in the grave clothes. And then they start telling him, hey, loose him. Hey, take this shit off, man, you know, and let him go. Okay? The people had to believe that this is the son of the Most High, man. You know? And the scripture says many things he did that can't be contained in the book, man. So you best believe there's some crazy stuff in the flesh that the Lord did that we don't even know about yet. Right. You know? That's the power we're dealing with, man. You know? Is there any more in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read this last bit. Uh, verse 45. There are many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things on which Yahushai did believed on it. Yeah, man, so that's the point. Lazarus had to die so that Yahweh Shai could be believed on, man, you know? Certain things have to go down a certain way so that Yahweh Shai can get his due glory, his due respect, man. Now that's ultimately going to happen when he comes back, as we were talking about earlier, man, you know? But all this emotional stuff of why did he have to die and, hey, listen, man, the Lord says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, man. Wow. My ways are not your ways, man. Okay? His ways... His ways, the Father's ways are higher than our ways, man, you know. But it's all for his glorification, man. Bottom line, man. That's why in Isaiah 55, as you read, it says, I am the power, I am the Lord, and there's none else, man. And this world is going to come to realize that, man. Yeah, brother, um, yeah, brother, um, Yeah, get me back. 11 to 25. Yeah, somebody else, get me um, first Corinthians 1. Start from verse. Just start from verse 25. You see what the Lord's doing right now, as He's been doing. The Lord is dealing with the lowly and the meek right now. Right, and he's always been doing it. He's never dealt with guys that were considered um, learned or skilled in the particular world that they were in. The same thing stands today. You know, the most high is not dealing with those that claim to be, you know, well studied and learned in these schools that got credentials of this world. The Lord is dealing with men that are coming from low places, man. And he's given them the wisdom and understanding that these men all the men of this world or any world for that matter cannot contain he's revealed it unto babes so we're going to get that scripture and we're going to go through the spirit of the lord and hopefully you know those of you guys that are watching this video and you brothers out there that are watching this video are edified on that fact all right because you know you have these men out there such as old cab james white the edomite they got lofty titles that's that's their that's their credentials, mm. their, their titles, so that when you think of these men, all right, in terms of learning the scriptures, you think, okay, I gotta go learn, I gotta go get this from them because they got they got the credentials, they got they got a good background to them, they got a good title to them. But 
they don't have the Holy Spirit. The men that have the Holy Spirit are the men that are coming from lower places. Okay? And it says in the scriptures that the Lord will reveal this unto babes. So let's read that. Matthew 11 verse 25. At that time, Yahweh shall answer and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, right. because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. Right, the wise and the prudent. Who is considered the wise <coughs> in the ancient Rome? The, um, the Pharisees, the scribes, the scribes and Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were the, they were the ones considered to be wise of the, concerning the law. Okay? But the Lord didn't reveal his understanding to them. He only revealed his understanding to the, to the men that truly believed in and had the, um, the ability to believe because they were the same men coming back in the reincarnation. They were the same prophets coming back in their life. So if there's a prophet on the scene, or if this man was born to become a prophet, the Most is going to reveal unto him the secrets so that he can publicate those of the, the things considered secret or that own secret to the world. And that's what we're doing right now. If you look at us, right, if you look at us today, the water bucket. If you look at us today, right? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, um, Karab, if you can hold this. Yeah, get, give it to him. Give that to him. Put, put the sign away. Put the sign away. Yeah, put the sign away. Yeah. The water The water bucket. The water bucket. You hold the big one over us. Come on. Yeah, so. Going back to what I was saying, the Most High was always dealing with the prophets, man. You'll have to do it. And the Lord knows his spirits. The Heavenly Father created all of the spirits on the earth. So he knows which one are, which one are his and which one, which one ain't. Alright? So, like the, like the young, like young lion said, he was talking about um, what old Cap and his crew was saying about what if you guys are wrong for all this stuff. Sorry, I can't just based on what I said and based on the men that you can see around you, just even on that, we're right. Okay, because anybody could have got this wisdom understanding. Men that have great credentials could have got this wisdom understanding. But the Lord revealed, revealed this unto men. You know, most of us coming from the back streets, man. Okay, most of us ain't coming from no royal elf or no um uh what is it, some high some high um sedine particular uh, place. We're not coming from those backgrounds. A lot of us are coming from the ends. We're going to get them. Okay? And the Lord revealed this wisdom understanding to them. Rather than him revealing this understanding to the men that's on top, or the men that's got great credentials. Okay? Because it ain't all about you learning the scriptures is about that the Holy Spirit is dealing with you. Because we came from, we came from a, a, a part where we didn't know absolutely a damn thing. All we were doing was just a bunch of niggas hanging around, smoking joints all day, listening to friggin' rap music all day. That's the world we was coming from. All right, but that's just to show the majesty and the uh, uncomprehendable way of the Heavenly Father. So, go on. Matthews 11, verse 19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous, a wine people, a friend of publicans and sinners. Right, so this man was a friend of publicans and sinners. The word pub a publican at the time was somebody that collected his taxes. And he was surrounded by sinners. So Yahweh Shai, even just based on that, he didn't have a good title. He had a terrible title according to the, what is it, the scribes and the Pharisees. So the Lord ain't dealing with how good your title is. The Most High is not dealing with all of that pride of man. The Most High is dealing with what he has. He's dealing with his own glory. Okay, and the Lord, the way he glories in men is by taking the weak or the inconsiderate and giving them the word so that the whole world can recognize them. Okay, but ultimately, and this is why the Heavenly Father set it up to the point where the prophets will always know the men. 